There's a variety of ways to make connections inside of Reactor, but the most important one to get a hold of first is just basic cabling between modules. In order to do that, we're going to need to have some modules. So let's look at how to load them up. First thing to get comfortable with is right clicking or control clicking in the structure view will give us this menu. All the modules are listed here in categories, makes them much easier to find. Once you know them by name, you might not need to use this menu. But at first, you definitely need it so you can find things. And then later on, you might want to use this menu to find things that you don't use every day and that you don't know by name. So if I'm looking for an envelope, I can go to the envelope category and I can see there's a whole bunch of options. Maybe I want to grab the ADR envelope. Now that I know it by name, I could use the search box. I actually don't even need to use this menu to get there. You can just use the enter key on my keyboard. Type ADR, hit return. I've got it. Same thing very quickly. You can make an LFO, a triangle oscillator, a little mixer here. That's very quick to load them up that way. And now you see there's two different types of ports we're looking at here. The mixer has one of each, yellow and white. The white ports are for audio signal, while the yellow ports are for control signal. If we look up here, we see sample rate, which is running at 44,100 hertz, also known as 44.1 kilohertz. That's cycles per second, or in digital audio, we're talking about samples per second. And it's important that we have a high sample rate so that we get good fidelity for our audio. Meanwhile, the control rate doesn't need to be nearly as fast. Right now it's set to 400 hertz. And if you think about what that really means, that means 400 times a second, which is still quite fast. Musically speaking, I can't really think of anything that I can do 400 times a second. But this does give us a good amount of resolution so that as we're turning a knob, it's being updated 400 times a second. That's going to sound a lot smoother than something that's only updated maybe twice a second. So I can connect a control output to a control input. That signal is being updated 400 times a second. I could also take a control signal and send it to an audio input. Now it might seem strange, but think about what's happening here is the audio rate is faster than the control rate. So it can handle the slower signal. It's the opposite that it can't do. It can't take an audio rate and run it through where it's expecting a control signal, which would be much slower. So you can't connect this audio output to this control input. If you look at this mixer for a moment, you'll see that it's got an audio input. So I could take this oscillator and run it into the mixer. And then it's got a control input for the level, which means how loud that signal is going to be. So right now, this LFO signal being updated 400 times a second is controlling the volume of this oscillator, which is being updated 44,000 times a second. While we're talking about cabling, there's something important to discuss here. This mixer, similar to a lot of other modules in Reactor, has these three little dots down in the corner under its lowest input. If I copy this oscillator, and I take the output of that, and I plug it in there, it's going to delete the other cable. You can only have one thing plugged into an input at a time. You'd think a mixer, by definition, would have more than one input. And that's what these three little dots are all about. So, if I take this other oscillator and I go to cable it up, I use my command key and it will magically add another input for me. Now I can add another oscillator. Notice that every time I add another input, it also adds a level input because I'm going to need to have a level control for each input that I have. And that's the basics of making connections in Reactor on the primary level.